So 1.20 grams of an unknown gas. Okay, so let me just write stuff down. So I have mass equals 1.20 grams. I have a temperature of 8 degrees Celsius. So if I add 273, that would be um, 281 Kelvin. I have a pressure of 724 millimeters of mercury and a volume of 969 milliliters. And it wants me to calculate molar mass. And so I haven't, there was no equations for molar mass. Like when um, I think about it, so molar mass... is the number of grams that you have in the number of moles. Okay, that's what molar mass is. Its units are how many grams per mole. And looking at the, what they gave me, I do know the number of grams. So I would think, okay, how can I figure out How many moles are in this sample? Then I think, okay, moles are in. I have T, P, and V. So I can find N and then plug it in there using the ideal gas law. Now, uh, one thing I want to point out, I mentioned this in the previous ideal gas law problem is R is a constant, so it always is getting plugged in there, but it has its own units. And that R, that number, 0 0.0821, is only good for those units. If I have different units, my R value would be different. So I look here, and the volume is liters. And this volume is milliliters. So let me change milliliters into liters so they match. So to go milliliters to liters, I'm going to divide by a thousand. Okay. Then I look, the pressure is atmospheres and I have millimeters of mercury. So uh, one atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury. I do give that to you on the exam, but you could, if you're doing homework or whatever, you could look it up either online or in your textbook. So let's see, I need to put the 760 on the bottom. So the millimeters of mercury cancel and the one atmosphere on the top. Okay, so 724. 724 divided by 760, 0 0.953. Then if I continue looking at my R, I have moles here, which is what I'm going to want because that's what I need to plug in. And then I also have Kelvin which I already converted to Kelvin. So this is an ideal gas law problem, but in this particular example, I was given the units that, if I plug those units directly in, I wouldn't get the right answer because they don't match R, the units in R. Okay, so let's look here. So P is 0 0.953 times volume, which is 0 0.969. That's the left-hand side. N is what I'm looking for, and I'm multiplying that by 0 0.0821. Crazy units. And T, 281. So I want to rearrange for N and so I'm going to take this right here and divide it to the other side. So 
So I, and you could simplify at this point, you just do your math. Uh, if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, don't forget to put a parenthesis around the denominator because we want it to multiply by those numbers before we divide. I love looking at my units. Look, atmospheres go away, liters go away, Kelvin go away, and we're left with moles, which is N is in moles, so that's good. So I have point nine five three divided by 0. 0.969. Why did I divide? You're probably, maybe you were listening and you're like, why are you dividing? 0. 0.953 times, sorry, 0. 0.969 divided by parenthesis 0. 0.0821 times 281, close parenthesis. And I get a small number, I get 0 0.04002. So I'm only going to keep the three significant figures. And the number after the zero is a two, so it stays. Now, that's not the answer. If you remember, go back to the beginning of the video, we were asked to determine the molar mass, which is up here in the right-hand corner. And molar mass is the number of grams per mole. So now what I can do is I have the grams because it was given. There it is. So I have 1.20 grams. Okay, that was given divided by the number of moles that this sample would have. So you see it's grams per mole, which is the molar mass. So let's do 1.20 divided by 0 0.0400. And I get to three significant figures, 30 grams per mole. And so that would be my answer. So just to summarize in this one, uh, one thing I recognized first off, which you, you don't really do until you practice, um, but that molar mass, I thought of its units. It tells me grams per mole. Then I recognized I had the number of grams given, so I used the ideal gas law to figure out the number of moles. What made this problem a little bit longer is every number I was given had to be converted into the units that matched R. So we got there. That doesn't always have to be. You just need to check and make sure they match.